Be present with us, O Lord, as we are in worship with you. Open our hearts to your spirit that you might be truly worshiped and glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. A word of instruction before I start. Last week I heard three comments that were heard because phones weren't muted. And I don't like to hear about bad sermons, so <laughs> mute your phones, please. We didn't think about the fact that if phones, that was just supposed to be a joke. We didn't think about the fact that phones that aren't muted can be heard when we're doing live streaming. So if when you're in, you would mute your phones, we would appreciate it. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. First lesson this morning is from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Has ordained the blessing. Heaven. Glory to glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Lord Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. And after he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, 
was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house. Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Take my lips, O Lord, and speak with them. Take our minds and think with them. Take our hearts and set them on fire. For Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. It was Sunday evening. The disciples, with the exception of Thomas, were gathered together in an upper room. The door was shut. The door was locked. The gospeler tells us it was for fear of the Jews that this was the reason. Of course, they had seen what could be done when they had watched Jesus be crucified. And as they're standing, as they're there, Jesus comes and stands among them, and he says, Peace be with you. And then he held out his hands, showed them the marks in his hands, showed them where he'd been pierced in the side, and it says they all believed and were delighted to see that Jesus was risen. And then he said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, now I send you. 
Bishop Wright of the Diocese of Atlanta talks about this. And he says a couple of things that are very important. He said that Jesus saying peace and sending them out did not mean that they would know the absence of conflict. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is something that you have within you that comes from a feeling of worthfulness that you have something to offer and are about doing it. Peace be with you as I send you, as I was sent, so I send you. And the disciples were excited. Peace doesn't mean sitting home in your chair with no worries. There was a, there was a thing on the internet that I don't know why several people sent it to me, but they did, including my wife. It said, how to take a nap in a chair. Number one, be old. <laughs> Number two, sit in the chair. And immediately I had Isaac with me, and I, Isaac told me about it being in there, and I said, and watch golf. Guaranteed to put you to sleep. That's not peace. Peace comes with active involvement with a sense of commitment. That's the gist of what Bishop Wright said, but that's not all of the gospel. The rest of the gospel, of course, is about our friend Thomas, who gets the unfortunate moniker of Doubting Thomas. I read something this week that really changed my perspective on this story. Think about it. The next week, the disciples were gathered together again. The doors were again shut and locked. They were again shut and locked. Thomas comes in and they say to Thomas, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas's response is that unless I see the marks in his hand, the piercing in his side, I will not believe. Now, we attribute that very often, and throughout history that has been attributed to Thomas as Thomas's doubt. This article says the Judgment is, that's there is not on Thomas. It's on the other disciples. Their witness was not compelling. Their witness was not such that Thomas who had had a three-year relationship with all of them, would believe them. Their witness was not compelling enough to convince Thomas that Jesus was raised from the dead. Now, there's a very different interpretation to that, isn't it? 
And I'll tell you what, as, as a Christian, as a person who is called to share the gospel, that would hit real close to home. It's close to home for me. How compelling is my witness? How compelling is the church's witness as we see numbers go down? Ouch. Ouch. And yet, each one of us are here, aren't we? Each one of us are here, and we're here because somehow, some way, somebody made a compelling enough witness to Jesus Christ that we find we want to be here. Back, Joanne reminded me this, last night, back the general convention when Gene Robinson was affirmed as someone worthy of being consecrated a bishop, and we all know what happened after that, churches left the Episcopal Church, so on and so forth. There was a resolution that was passed by the General Convention that got next to no publicity. And that resolution was that each member of the church be encouraged to learn to tell their own story, their own story with the church, their own story with people in the church, their own story with Jesus, because that's the way that the gospel gets shared, is when your own story of what compels you and to be in church, you can put out there, others can come to faith. It was completely forgotten in the hullabaloo surrounding Gene Robinson. What a loss for the church, what a gain for the forces of death that was lost. We are compelled to go out. Thomas comes in, and Jesus turns to Thomas, and he says, Thomas, here are my hands. Put your finger in the holes. Here's my side. Place your hand there. And Thomas, Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Thomas had seen something compelling enough that he was convinced. We all know that Jesus can't come to every single person. (laughs) Say, Dennis, here are my hands. Put your fingers in them. Dennis, here's my side. Put your hand in it. But Jesus said to all of the disciples, peace as the Father sent me, so now I send you. And we say, my goodness, Trying to make that witness is, number one, scary, 
And number two, I don't have enough faith to do that in a way that is compelling enough to convince others. Jesus told the church, that's you and I, all that have come before us, all that will come after us, I will be with you till the end of the ages. Jesus is still with the church. And with Jesus, whether it's by our actions, because as Dr. Kellerman said to me in seminary, said to the whole class, faith is caught, not taught. Faith comes from seeing other faithful people, and you know that's their faith. There's the call, and with Jesus, our faith can be such that it will be compelling. We can do it. And I was struck as I read or heard, read, and I read from the book of Acts, as they talked about how everyone was of one mind and heart and soul and so on. And their excitement, it says, with great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. They didn't have it that day in the upper room with Thomas. They didn't have it for a while, but along came the Holy Spirit, and suddenly, suddenly, with great testimony and power, they gave their testimony. And thousands were converted. Sort of all right there, isn't it? It's all right there. Thomas doubted. And each one of us know that doubt is a part of our faith. Each one of us know what we have overcome, the doubt, the pain, the sense of betrayal, the sense of loss that we've overcome because of faith and because of the help of the cloud of witnesses that are around us. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the word to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Through the incarnation, death, and resurrection of Jesus, God brings a new gift of peace into the world. Let us offer our prayers with thankful hope, saying, God has ordained the blessing, life forevermore. Breathe your Holy Spirit upon your church, O gracious one, that we may be of one heart and soul. Live together in unity and bring the light of your reconciling gospel of forgiveness and peace to the whole world. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Inspire the leaders of our nation and all in authority through all the world with breath of your peace, that they may share their possessions with the poor and bring justice and comfort to all who live in fear or need. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Be present to any who, hum, who huddle fearle, fearfully behind closed and locked doors, and let the healing touch of the wounded Jesus come to comfort all who suffer anywhere on the earth. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Let the community walk in your light and do our work of reconciliation, revealing the eternal, eternal life that was with the Father and has been revealed to us. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Hear the cries of all who grieve like Thomas and of all who suffer from any form of anguish, illness, or hurt, especially, please add your own petitions. Bill and Liam. That they may touch the healing presence of the risen Christ. Complete our joy as we offer our work of thanksgiving to you, especially, please add your own petitions. Receive in your eternal life all who have died, especially, please add your own petitions. That they may have life in Christ's name. God has ordained the blessing. Life forevermore. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when kindred live together in unity. Fill your people with the breath of your Holy Spirit, O oh God, and bring us the assurance of forgiveness that we may be enlivened to participate in Christ's work of reconciliation on behalf of all the world and share in his eternal life, here and now, forevermore. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And in 
keep it. Yes, ma'am. Oh, peace. <laughs> peace. Peace be with you and peace be with you. Oh. And as we have been doing, let us, before we go to the offering, offer prayers for those who have birthdays this week. Sydney, L'Oreal, Forte. <laughs> Nelson and Claudette. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good to be with you again. We welcome you for being here. And I would say, encourage others to be here now that we're having live worship again. Uh, let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Seven of those cups with the wafers and wine in them off the table down there. Okay.
all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty Father, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, 
by him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in everlasting life.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. alleluia.